Out and about Marathon Town with Mr. Marathon himself, Mike Pudo. Hello everybody, Mike Pudo, Mr. Marathon, and we're continuing our Out and About Marathon series with Parks and Recreation. Let's go see what's going on and let's have some fun today. Hello everybody, Mike Pirdo here, Mr. Marathon in Out and About Marathon Town. Here we are at the beautiful Dolphin Research Center on Grassy Key. We're gonna go inside and see what they have to offer us. Go take a look at those dolphins. It's unbelievable. You don't wanna miss this one. How you doing, Morning. my brother? Good to, Good to see you. Thanks, Thanks for, for having us here. This is this is fun. We're gonna we can't wait to get out there and be with those dolphins. Well, let's not wait. Let's then introduce you to some dolphins. Let's Come go. Let's, let's go. go. Welcome, Mike, to the Dolphin Research Center. Well, this is this, this is just unbelievable to be at the Dolphin Research Center. It's legendary. It's historical. And we're with Mandy Rodriguez. And Mandy, thank you very much, buddy, for having us here. This is really my pleasure. Totally awesome. Right? It's cool to have him here. Dolphin Research Center, actually, believe it or not, this is where Flipper started. And we all know Flipper. We all grew up with Flipper, right? You like Flipper? Yes, we love Flipper. You know, as everything as every actor has their stand in, Flipper had her stand in, believe it or not. There were five Flippers that started in the movie, in the, in the show. Two had an onstage romance, and Tercy was born. Whoa! Tercy has been here now for 38 years. She's getting to be an old gal. And she has two teenage sons and a young daughter. Now watch, we're going to ask her, actually you're going to ask okay. her. What you're going to do is you're going to put your finger like this okay. and then you're going to take that finger, I'm going to do it here so she doesn't see it, okay. and go around okay. and see what she does. Okay. You ready? Pay attention to Mike. Okay, now, there you go. Now watch in the center of the pool. So how long has the Dolphin Research Center been in existence? Because I've known you for over 40 years. I know, so, isn't that something? Uh, we yeah. were really young. We were only two when <laughs> and we And we had met. hair on yes. top of our head. We had hair on top of our head. Actually, the facility has been here since the late 50s, early 60s. It was Milton Santini's right. corporate school at the time. Dolphin Research Center started in 1984 as a nonprofit organization. All we wanted to do was basically give homes to unwanted marine mammals, the ones that strands, the one that hurt. As a matter of fact, well, hopefully I'll introduce you to a couple of those guys. Uh, one, his name is Louie. He actually was part of this oil spill that we had in the Gulf. Whoa, okay. Um, and he was given 5% or less chance of living. But boy, he didn't believe that. He is a wonderful young man today. And our mission here at Dolphin Research Center is to basically make sure that these wonderful animals are taken care of and that be, being here we want to educate with them and we do a lot of things with not only challenge folks but as well as veterans wounded warriors come and uh, they enjoy these wonderful animals but uh, they they just seem to you know they seem to accept you for who you are they don't have an agenda there is no agenda at all right none whatsoever no and, and it's amazing how they know uh, when the person's in the water, whether it's a, a, a special needs person or she's pregnant or it's a quadriplegic, whatever, and how, they, whatever that sixth sense is, as, as I say, is really, uh, it's totally awesome because, I mean, I've seen your programs here and it's amazing how they adapt to the person in the water. And, and here's the funniest part is that a lot of people say, well, how do you guys train that? We don't. These animals, these dolphins know, as you're saying, that have that extra sense to know whether to go a little faster on their dorsal toe or just to take it easy, right? right. Now, I know, Manny, when, uh, you know, one of the things we try to do is educate the public, you know, about dolphins. And, of course, you'll see all of the ads on television where they're out there saying, don't co-mingle with the dolphin who are out fishing. Don't feed them. Don't do these kind of things. What, what does that do? Does that interfere with their lifestyle in reference to how they go for food and all that? Well, yeah, what happens, usually these people are in a boat. Right. And the boats obviously have propellers. And these guys, they are smart. And a lot of people say, well, if they're so smart, how can they get hit by a boat? Well, 
humans are pretty smart. We get hit by cars. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, so you zig instead of zag. The thing is that you should not be near these animals when you're out there. Stay about 100 feet away and watch them. They do, they're beautiful if you, if you watch them from far away. If you come too close, you may disrupt a fishing. Maybe they're fishing, maybe they're mating. They're just, I'm trying to tell them. <laughs> Or you're just maybe disturbing a social grouping. Right. Um, not to say that you may injure them. Certainly you should never feed them. These guys do really well on their own. They were well adapted with their echolocation and their speed. They can do fine on their own. Do not feed these animals. Do not go near these animals. Watch them from far away and enjoy them. Right? In other words, if you're, if you're happen to be out in the water, you see a pod, don't go to the pod. But if you happen to be just cruising by, and I've noticed a lot of times, for example, where we've been out and uh, uh, we've seen the, the dolphins be in front of the boat. Yes. That's, that's, that's just totally awesome. I mean, it's just, uh, I mean, it's unbelievable how they can keep up with the speed of the boat. And, and uh, I would assume they could probably go, what, 40 miles an hour maybe? Or? Well, it's about, <laughs> 20, it's about 22, 23. But here's the thing. When you're moving on a boat, you're pushing a big wall of water. What these guys are doing is they're riding that uh, wall of water. Okay. And you'll see them take take turns in the center and then when they drift back they'll ride the wave so it's pretty much akin to a motorcycle getting behind a semi and getting sucked in not that i've ever done that no mind no, you. no no never, no, no, never, 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 never do that no no never do that but it's the same idea it's they they drift with it or they ride with it it's called echelon swimming right right <laughs> now are you ready to see a beautiful body i'm ready to see a beautiful body yes sir oh you're I'm, dolphin oh, okay, oh, I got okay. ready and Tina, come on up. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, my oh, very good. Thank you, pumpkin. All right, now you've met Santini. Let me yes. show you one of her better, better acrobatic feats. Are you ready? I'm ready. Now, you, uh, before you leave here, you have to do what she's about to do, okay? Uh, Is that a deal? I'll give it a try. All right. I'll give it a try. You ready, Santini? I'll give it a try. Circle. Now, watch. You have to really pay attention because you're going to have to do this before you leave. This young man had less than 5% chance of living, and here he is. He is just the most beautiful little boy. We kind of guesstimate his age as just a few years, but of course we don't know. Hi, but he's got those beautiful, beautiful eyes. He's just a little boy. Can you, Glenn? Can you say hi to Mr. Mike? Hello, how are you? How are you? Can you how say are hi? You? Good to see you. He is a survivor. He is the poster boy for survivor. How did, uh, when, when they found him, I'm assuming he was beached or in shallow water and then I mean, probably loaded with oil and all that good stuff? Or? Exactly. He was, he was found on a beach exactly like that. Wow. Oil all around him, not, not in him, but all around him. And he was really debilitated. Oh. He was very, very thin. And uh, as I said, they didn't give him much of a chance to live. But he has the will to live. And the thing is that there's something that we need to learn about him. We're not quite sure what it is yet that he's gonna teach us, but he's gonna teach us something and we need to learn from him. He is a true survivor. You know, one question that, uh, you know, that I've always wanted to ask, how do the dolphins react to a storm situation? Here comes a hurricane or the blow coming through and, and I know that they're self-sufficient, but again, how, you know, what, what do you do? You can't put up shutters or anything like that. And well, it, where, where do they go or how do they handle themselves? It, it, uh, actually, that's, that's a very good question because when the storms, like Wilma, for example, we had Wilma, the humans, we probably got ulcers, bleeding ulcers. The dolphins thought that it was the most wonderful thing. What happens is we leave them here and we open all our gates there. Every single lagoon has a gate, underwater gate that, that adjoins it. And uh, with Wilma, everybody knows that we got flooded. Oh yeah. There was eight feet of water over the top of the fence. Did they go anywhere? No, they stayed home. The thing that they did was that they rode the surf. They had a great time. As I said, we humans were dying of yeah. ulcers, but the dolphins were happier than you can tell. And when the water receded, everybody was back in their home. That's so it's, it's a really good feeling to know that these guys stay here because they like their home. We do cover from uh, Key West to, to Homestead. Any manatee uh, rescue, we take part in. And uh, of course, manatees, we need to help them. And again, if everybody can stop giving them water and feeding them, um, I think we'll be better off. There are, there are about 3,000 and some odd left in this world. After they go, we don't get any more. Right. So if you, if you have a 
friendly manatee that comes to your dock, please don't water them, please don't swim with them, please don't feed them. If they're injured, you need to call the FWC, Florida Wild, uh, Fish and Wildlife, and then they will contact the proper people for us to rescue them. Right. If you love them, don't feed them, don't water them. Good point. Because you're hurting them. Yeah, good point. Well, we've had a phenomenal time here meeting everybody. The staff is really unbelievable. Uh, you know, they really know how to work with the animals, and you, you know, all have done a great job here for all these years. And how would the public, you know, how do they get a hold of you, and how do they get up here to the research center? And give us, I know we got the email and the phone number, give us all the particulars, please. Well, the phone number is really easy, 305-289-1121. And then you can uh, get into our computer system and you can ask any questions whatsoever. Um, Dolphins.org is our website and you can visit us through there. Um, if, if Become a member, that's the thing. Yes. Um, it's really easy to become a member, not very expensive. And guess what? You can come back every day uh, for a year or for two years or for 20 years. Uh, we also have a splash park for the kids, which I have little kids, and it's great to bring them here, let them get tired and wet, and then come see the dolphin. So we urge you to come, and we'd like you to come and meet all these wonderful, wonderful, wonderful animals. Is that right? <laughs> Can you say goodbye to Mr. Marathon? Say goodbye. Say goodbye. Thank you. Say goodbye. Thanks for being here. And thank you, Mike, very much for, for coming well, over. Thanks for having us here, and thanks for everything that you do for these animals. Your staff, this facility is just unbelievable, and what a place to be. you got to come see this place. It's unbelievable. From the Dolphin Research Center, until next time.